What's up gamers, this is that PlayStation Gamer. Today we're going to talk about anime games and how these things have become shameless cash grabs. Like, listen man, I know a lot of people out there like Spark and Zero, but that player base has dropped off so damn hard. Fucking Concord is asking, yo, uh, how's it feel now? <laughs> like, listen man, I, I, I thought Spark and Zero was fine for a bit. I thought, you know, hey, this was a game that's, you know, for Dragon Ball fans. I'm kind of a Dragon Ball fan. But it's like, the more I play this game, the more I realize, man, this is just like the most shallow experience I've had in a long time. And I mean, necessarily like the game looks fine at times, but it's like, it's just one of those games that's like, you could tell that their production value is very much lower than what you would expect from a big level game like you know Dragon Ball Spark and Zero. This was the most anticipated anime game in history. And if I'm being honest, it was barely above what Xenoverse does. It's barely above it's like, yes, so the graphics are great. Yes, so tight so it looks like a great game. But it's like whenever it's like it's this stuff right here, like you're seeing on the screen, like it's the half the fucking lines are not even voice acted. And by the way, I also just hate the fact that, you know, anime games always have, you guys won't be able to see it, but like, you know, that little part, like, you know, right there on top of Goku's face, I hate there's these copyright things. Some of them actually get ridiculously big. Like, holy shit. They take up like half that fucking screen. It's like, wow, that just makes, you know, getting his foot, getting his foot shit, you know, a bitch to deal with. But also just like, I'm just being honest. I just, there's no anime game out there. That seriously changes the fucking formula. Outside of maybe like something like Death Note, the enemy within. And that's just because like it's Death Note. You can't make Death Note a fighting game. You know, if it's a fighting game, it's pretty fucking bare bones. Like this fundamentally, oh, it's like, you know, it's fighting. You know, I guess it's controls and shit. It's good. It's like, wow, this actually kind of feels like it's trying to be a bit of a fighting game. But far as the content goes, it's so fucking shallow you step in a puddle has more fucking depth than it like it's just ridiculous and i feel like this is the way it's been going for a while with these anime games like they just you know have very surface level content and then they just call it quits like the the demon slayer game that came out remember that one the, the chronicles one and how that game was just like absolutely 100 percent fucking boring as hell Dragon Ball uh, Spark and Zero, it's got the same problem. And also, Bor uh, Naruto Boruto Connections has the same problem. It's like, but the, at least that actually has a longer campaign than Spark and Zero and Demon Slayer. Like, just, I'm sorry, man. I, I know some people out there probably like these games. I don't. I, I'm, I'm getting at that point. I'm like, yo, if I see an anime game, I just want to sit there and go, yeah, I'm, I'm just not interested. Just not interested. Like, cause I know it's going to be a shallow experience. I know it's barely going to be, it's barely going to cover the anime itself. And most of the time it's just a one-to-one -one retelling of the same story. Hell, in Xeno, so, so, I almost said Xenoverse too. Spark and Zero, the what ifs feel like they're just kind of slapped on. I mean, that's sincerely like, they just kind of like they're there. Some of them are literally just, you defeat the enemy quicker. There. there, there's there's the difference. Or hey, you could pick Majin Buu here, or you could pick Tien, or you could pick you know freaking other characters. And it's like, but you don't really get to pick them because like they're all canonically supposed to be in the team. So it's like there's not much. See, it's like there's not much for choice there. And while some of the what ifs are interesting, like Gohan Black. I also think those what ifs would have been great if they were, you know, something like DLC or if they would have had their own freaking skins or, you know, their whole, their own move, the fighting set. But we don't get that. And it's just like, it's locked into the, like this one part of the campaign and that's it. That, and also just the roster for uh, Spark and Zero. I just gotta say it, man. It's fucking shallow. It's shallow. Like, Really, how many fucking variants of Goku and Vegeta can you have? Well, apparently almost over 10. It's insane. And that's how you count like the fusions, because technically the fusions would count as a Goku-Vegeta variant. So it's like, look at this fucking shit. Look at this. 
This is like the most stilted animation I have ever fucking seen. And people were giving this game a 10 out of 10? <laughs> Fuck no. Hell no. I wouldn't fuck. No, no, no. Like I said in the fucking co- the post I made. This, at most, is like a fucking 6 or 7. Depending on how much you like Dragon Ball. If, if I'll be honest, you know, like someone who's like a casual Dragon Ball fan. I'll tell you right fucking now. I give this game a fucking 4. Like, it's just, okay, cool. You have nice visuals. But the voice acting sounds like they just either pulled it straight from the fucking anime or the voice actors don't give a shit and are just getting ready to walk off the fucking set. Oh, my God. But for the record, I just got to say this. This is something that I've always wanted to just rant about when it comes to Dragon Ball. Zeno's voice. Fuck Zeno's voice. Both dub and sub. And I, I, I can't listen to, you know, fucking Grandma Goku go, ah! And voicing the entire Sun family for, I do not understand what fucking reason. Like, literally, they all sound the same. They all sound like they're the fucking clones of Goku. Like, Jesus fucking Christ! I and like, see, they had a chance with the roster to actually give us more characters. You know, like not just you know the characters that are like the big marquees of the tournament of power. You know. They could have given us the entire trio of danger, but they didn't because you only know one of them. So, hey, let's just do the minimum with it comes to everyone else. But, hey, we'll make sure to have two fucking versions of Broly because I guess they made fans happy by having these two versions of the same character. Oh, by the way, so those GT characters you wanted, like Super 17, well, it's just a creative a bit of a conflict with Super 17, Android 17 from Super. We won't do that. We won't do that. Oh, and GT Vegeta? Yeah, he's there. As possessed baby. Like, just, uh, there's just like thing after thing this game does that just bugs me. And all anime games do this shit. Either the roster's either outdated or the roster is shallow as hell. Like, I think the last real anime game, I'll say, that I actually enjoyed playing was Naruto Ninja Storm 4. And that's just because, like, it actually felt like the finale of the Naruto game. So, it was like, it was going all in. The graphics look amazing. I still think they look fucking amazing to this day. You know, the quick time events were still fucking fun to play, you know, because, you know, it's just a quick little thing. You know, they even tried to add a couple little different things in there. I also like the fact that it covered the full Naruto story outside of, like, you know, obviously what the other games covered. You know, like, it actually, technically we got the dub for that before we ever got the dub for Naruto Shippuden, which is kind of crazy to think about, right? So, I don't know, man. Just anime games just... They feel like shameless cash grabs. They really do. And the more anime becomes popular, the more it's going to keep happening. Like, listen, I'm like I said, I'm, the, I'm pretty casual when it comes to Dragon Ball. But like this, I'm sorry. If this was like a 10 out of 10 for you, I don't know what fucking fighting games you've been playing. I don't know what games you've been playing, but clearly it's not, they're not real 10 out of 10 games. Like just, I'm sorry. This game just pissed me off and, I'm deleting it from my PlayStation. I'm never going to fucking play it again. I don't even care if I bought the Ultimate Edition or whatever. You know, because, like, honestly, what are they going to do? They're just going to add a superhero character. So, probably Pan, probably Orange Piccolo, probably uh, potential Lock Goku, or not Goku, Piccolo. Probably they'll add a couple cosmetics for Goku and Vegeta. They'll probably add fucking, you know, just the, like the, the bare minimum. And that's the problem I have. It's like these games always feel like they're meeting the bare minimum requirement. After that, they just don't give a shit. So, with that said, this, this is that PlayStation Gamer sign out. What do you guys think of anime games? Do you think they've fallen off? Or do you think they're hitting an all-time peak because they look super good? Like, if that, that's the thing that's most important to you is visuals. Then, yeah, these games are hitting an all-time high. But I think as far as content goes, it's been shallow as hell. So until next time, guys, this is that PlayStation and Gamer signing out. Let do the YouTube thing. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that YouTube RMBS. Bye.